Altenburg in Germany, the t venue for the 2020 Men's Skeleton World Championships. We are here for the fourth and final run in his second weekend of the BMW IBSF Bobsleigh and Skeleton Worlds. Welcome back, everybody, to what has been a snowy Altenburg today for the fourth and final heat of the Men's Skeleton Competition, where we go 20 down to one. The fastest sleds go into heat four. Martin Haven and John Morgan. And John, we have a fascinating race in prospect. Well, Alexander Glasner here has been flying down the track, third, second, and third in the three here. Excuse me, this is Axel Young. But uh, he was first, third, and first in three heats. He had one off run in the second run. He's only 20 hundredths out of the gold. Christo Christoph Grothier here, I mean, he's, this is Gastner, sorry. Uh, he's in second, second, third, and third. He's been pretty consistent. He's been the most consistent because he's only 700s off the pace. And the German sweep, well, the top of the leaderboard is Grothier. He wasn't even on the World Cup team most of the season. And uh, he's flying down the track with the second best time, then the track record, then the fourth best time in the third run. He's got a 700s lead. And the uh, three Germans, top of the leaderboard, it's going to be a German that's going to capture the medal. The Germans have never won a world championship on this track. In 99, Jim Shea from the United States won. 2008, Kristen Bromley from Great Britain. We're going to see a German win today. Yes, we are. Only two times have Germany won the Men's Skeleton World Championship. Axel Jung, the leader after the first heat, slipped to third overnight. He's closed a little. The top three are covered by two-tenths of a second. And down at the bottom of our top 20, there was just as tight a dogfight to make it through into the final heat. And in the end, it was American Samoa's Nathan Crumpton who found enough pace to overhaul Gung Wen Chang of China for that 20. 20th spot and a ticket to the party for the fourth and final heat. Well, Felix Keisinger there in the center, he is looking for fourth place here. He's got to overhaul Martins two cause. You saw Axel Jung there and Alexander Gassner. They are third and second behind Christopher Grothair. That might be the big story of the championships for the men is that Grothair is the fastest of the lot. We haven't seen him all year. He hasn't been in the World Cup team. This young man, the full time thrower, the junior world champion, was the man who took his spot away in the World Cup team and uh, Alexander uh, Christopher Grohe rather getting in to join Alexander Gassner and Axel Jung because Felix Keisinger as the junior world champion gets a free spot. Well you saw Martin Stukos of Latvia there and the six-time world champion the defending world champion looks to be well out of the hunt for the medals here but who knows what the weather will bring. We've seen some wild exits of curves and you know there's no there's no easy way down the track martin so anything yeah. can happen yes that's absolutely true and the weather is still not necessarily going to be entirely accommodating at the moment it's a little windy but it is clear ish Fourth and final heat of the Men's Skeleton World Championships of the BMW IBSF Worlds here at Altenburg in Germany. Martin Haven and John Morgan watching American Samoa's first skeleton athlete, Nathan Crompton. 20th after three heats, he blasts away to get the competition underway. Well, he was on the U.S. team, finished like eighth, I think, in the World Championships in Innsbruck. Princeton University, awesome track and field athlete, uh, triple jumper, but uh, had problems making the American team. Had a lot of injuries last couple years, so he's sliding for American Samoa. He's got some connection. America Samoa did have a bobsled team in the 94 Olympics, believe it or not. And Nathan, you know, 23rd in the first run, 15th in the second run, 15th in the third run. Those last two runs is what got him into the top 20. And his target is Sammy Meyer, who is only 500s faster than him after three heats. He'll be the next sled on ice. So Crumpton, having clawed his way back into the top 20, now looking to try and move up the order. Good lines. Yeah. Make it look easy. Not everybody does. This track is... And no snow on the track right now, yeah. so that's we'll good news for all the athletes. Here. So 57, wow. 17, he just flew down the track the fastest. No, nope, his fastest time was 57.05. But that's three tenths faster than the first, first heat team. just a couple of hours well, he, ago. He's got the track all spritzed up. Yep. I mean, there's the best and great speeds and times to be achieved now. We'll get down to those final three sliders. 
Wow, that's tight for a world championship. A lot of pressure between those three athletes. Yeah, really no German has ever won a world championship on this track. Don't like it when they put their foot in the groove. But you know, this is a great track of field athletes. Set all sorts of records at Princeton. You know, he's another guy who's too smart to be in the sport. <laughs> but uh, here's the pivotal part of the track. This, you know, you, that's not too bad there. He came up off the ice a little bit, but do we call that the scorpion part of the track. Nathan threw one down. <laughs> So final heat of the World Championships done for Nathan Crumpton. He'll hang out in the leader's box as he sees if Austria's Sammy Meyer can hold his spot. Matthias Guggenberger there with the sled. One of seven coaches here who were racing in the last World Championships in Altenburg in 2008. And talking of Austria, in 1991, for the only time, a nation swept the skeleton podium. It was Austria in Innsbruck. Christian Auer, Andy Schmidt, and Mickey Grunberger were the three medalists. All three men are here coaching or running the event this weekend. So, Sammy Meyer, more uh, family stuff. We'll see his brother tomorrow. And the four-man bobsled. Ben. 532 giving away his slender lead to Nathan Crumpton at the start. So now 200s in front. Yeah, but Sammy's pretty good slider. He's, you know, hanging in there with a deficient start. 19th, 20th, and 18th in the 30. Here he goes. 11, you know, that's ooh, that's not a good line in Chrysler. Really holding it down low. But he's got green numbers. Now in red, that's all because of that bad line in Chrysler 4. He could still find green numbers here in the bottom with good lines. 16. No, nope. that exit of Kreisel did him in. Nathan Crumpton will move up at least one. Two kilometers an hour down on Crumpton in terms of speed at the bottom of the track. Crumpton 46. In nice the helmet. Box. Even though that's his 1400s better than his last heat. Well, Crumpton, Crumpton went three tenths better, and the gap between them was Crumpton, only 500. So. Crumpton just had a disastrous first yeah. run. Yeah. You know, you can't win the race in the first run or the first heat. But you can lose it. Yep. 15th in run two and three for Nathan Crumpton. That's where he would have been hoping to be around. Sammy Meyer. 28th, 26th, 28th. Well, this will be no worse than the 20th run in the final heat. And at least he made the final heat on his world championship debut. But look at the skid here coming onto the Chrysler. The sled That's trying That's to drive up. He's trying yeah. to hold it down. Yeah, yeah. he's uh, too much pressure, That's too much steering, yep. friction. And his speed was gone, and he's in the red numbers. But he could do no worse than 20th place in a world championship for a 20-year-old. Florian Auer down there at the bottom helping out. I beg your pardon, it's not Florian Auer. No. Uh, next up is uh, Craig Thompson for Great Britain. 18th place after three of four heats. He's the third of the British men. So this is how to do it at the start. This is one of the best starters on the planet. First in the first heat, third and third in the next two. He's a great starter, but his times, 20th, 17 and 17, tell you that he's still learning how to drive down these ice canals. He's got a huge lead right now, but it could be thrown away right here. Watch the right side of your screen. Bet, here's a scorpion, the first of... A uh, probably another half dozen. We'll see make mistakes there. 6,200 lead. Most tracks you think that's safe. Not here. He keeps doing things like this. 62 down to 53. The line here. Three pressure points. Way too low. Third pressure point. He should exit. Okay. Three and a half kilometers down to 26. Down on Nathan Crumpton. This still 26. Should go away down here. If yeah. He's not straight. He's got to be straight right here. And Crumpton he's not. One six down. Look at that. He's gone. Oh, horrible. He's, Crumpton's going to move up another spot. Yeah. Craig Thompson drops into the red, and he will drop down to second place at the line. Third place at the so, line. He went from 6200s up to 6500s back. He lost one. 0.3 seconds. Well, if you're a fan of the sport, keep your eyes on this guy. Start time like that, when the British finally figure out how to let him drive this track, or these tracks, this guy will be a, a, a formidable opponent, because he can start. Watch this, so this is this is when you don't know what's going on. This is what everybody's doing this. Doesn't yeah. matter if you're a rookie or the best guy in the world, like Trechikov. This is now the exit of Kreisel, or exit of nine, excuse me, and he's a little late there, and you know, when you're on your bunks like that, it's the way to lose time. Yep. All the energy coming out the sled as you drop off the wall. So Craig Thompson drops a couple of spots to third place. Great future for him, though. Yep. Still learning how to drive these icy tracks. 
Nathan Crumpton, the leader, as we get to Florian Auer of Austria. Matthias Guggenberger with the sled. His dad, Christian Auer, the world champion in 1991 for Austrian men's skeleton, is here at the track as well. And his dad won the World Cup title five out of six years in yep. that time period. He did. He And he did it with great starts. And I'm just surprised his son doesn't get a great start. He's got two sons. They both yep. competed in the world championships in Innsbruck. It was a great family thing. But his start time... His, his dad was one of the best starters at that time, but the sport was a little different in 1991. Yeah. Well, Christian Auer here with Florian, the silver medalist back in 91, Andy Schmidt coaching the Chinese team, and the bronze medalist, Mickey Grumberger, is the IBSF sports chief for skeleton. 46 hundredths. Well, he stays on line right here. That's he a good should stop the bleeding. Yeah. Nice lines from Florian Auer. Good Best speed. speed. He's only 50 hundreds bleeding, so he might be. He might be. You know, here he goes, 52 hundreds. So he's going to be the leader. He shows you he's got great experience. Of course, being coached by his father. And you know, if they figure out how to get this young athlete, what's he, 22? And the Austrians are working with the Latvians as well. Two smaller nations working together. Yeah. So Florian Auer, 25 years old, across the line. Boy, Martin, he just came down the track 76 hundredths better than his last heat. That's his best heat of the four. Well, that was the same time down the track as Nathan Crumpton. So if the first three heats had only been to set the starting order and you went on your first heat, on your final heat alone, they would be the joint leaders, as it is. 45 hundreds earned over the previous three runs. Florian sure Auer has the lead. I'm sure there's a few athletes in the field would like to be able to throw one heat out. Yeah. But they don't do that. No, they, they don't do that. They won't do that It's either. like golf. You can't Look forget Look at the lines day. here. This is spectacular pictures. Look at the different lines. It's Crumpton in the... It's Auer. Look at the different height right, of the at, athletes as well. How much at, of Crumpton is yeah. overhanging yeah. the back of the sled yeah. as well. And that changes the way you slide, sure. the different sled that you use. So Florian Auer, our race leader. 16th after three heats in the Men's Skeleton World Championships, Ukraine's Vladislav Hereskevich. Look at his father here to the right. We, you know, we just talked about the hours. This is a father-son duo here. Yeah, Mikhail, a strongman competitor. His son started off in that and mixed martial arts as well. This is kind of a sea change, isn't it, in your sporting heritage? 517 starts 100th quicker than Florian Auer. Son. A little bit of a boxer background, and he's a f physics student. I mean, it's like another guy probably way too smart to be in the sport. Nice exit from corner four, avoids the bump into five. That's how you keep the speed on board. 2300s up. And he's a good glider. He, he's a deficient starter, but he is a good glider. That's a good looking run from nine down to the Kreisel. Top speed opening up his advantage now. 13th best time in the last run, so he definitely improved. 15th in the first, 18th in the second, 13th in the third, and this is like uh, his feet are together. Textbook form, even here, 6,300, so 117, nine kilometers. Good Perfect speed. run. Everybody's starting to figure out that uh, you know, they can beat up on the track. Wow. 56, 64. That's his best time. By half a second uh, almost. Yeah, it is. No, 48 hundredths. Yeah. Wow. 56, 64. That's a really nice They're run from Vladislav Hereskevich. Well, They're it's all so free, yeah. and the track is highly polished. It's as fast as they've had it all week, I think. 56, 64 would have put him in a top position. That's a pretty good time. Good form, though. Look at him. I mean, he's... And, Martin, we talked about it in the last heat. He's lost about 15, 20 pounds yep. from... He looked like a bobsledder. Now he's looking more like a skeleton athlete. Needs some sprinting. Gets a good start. This kid could make a name for himself. He's 20. Now, he's 20 years, another 20-year-old. He is three-tenths quicker. Do we think the track record is in trouble yeah. when we get to the end of the run? I think it is. Vladislav Hariskevich leads from Florian Auer and Nathan Crumpton. 15 to go. Final heat of the men's skeleton world championships 2020. We're at Altenburg, Germany. Martin Haven and John Morgan in the booth. Matt Weston for Great Britain at the line. One World Cup start in his young career. This is his first race in the world championship. 16th in the first heat, improved to 10th. Then 21st, a disappointing third heat to drop him back to being the second of the British sliders. But 5.07, another big start from the youngster. Yeah, he's, he's doing pretty good. I mean, that's all you want is experience. Just 22 years old, did the Junior Worlds in 2020, just three weeks ago. He finished in fifth place. 
It's only his third year of sliding ice. Opening up his advantage now over Heraskevich. It was only nine hundredths of a second. It's out to 26 hundredths, but a skid there is going to bring him back. Speed's not that good. He'll be in the red as he comes off the Chrysler. Ukrainian athletes have real good glider speed oh. gliders down to a hundredth. Hundredth in front. The speed and is close. Oh no. It's going to be within a hundredth or two. Heraskevich in 15th place potentially. 14th last year. Matt Weston, can he hang on? Going to get him. No, yeah. nine hundredths. Heraskevich, so. which just has more third year sliding. Yeah. Weston, though, has had a good world championships. Yep. Well, head of teammate Craig Thompson, who made his World Cup debut this season. And Matt Weston with just one World Cup race this year. Hey, good way to finish in the World Championships. He could do no worse. 15th. Yeah. Matt made his debut with 13th place in Samaritz. Hands, look at the technique. British got two out of the three athletes are really good starters. Young and, but that's what you want to build the team with. Good starters. You got to start, you got a chance. Well, three out of the three aren't too bad. They're all in the top half dozen starters. So Matt Weston, well, Matt isn't actually uh, yeah, Matt's in the 10th, 11, 12, but uh, again, yeah, it's okay. just 22 years old. Matt's got a bright future. Yeah, first world championships done at one of the toughest tracks on the planet. Now, looking at Yuns Jungi of Korea, he's the third of their skeleton sliders, and he has a, what is it, 24 hundredths of a second advantage over Vladislav Heraskevich from the first three heats. Katsuhiro Koshi, the coach, also raced in the Worlds here in 2008. For Japan. Yeah, 497, that's a good start. That's equaling his fastest of the competition. Gonna need it because, you know, he's had a little issue here with this scorpion section of the track right here, four to five. And he's got another one. Again, not enough steering in corner four. He's got it. He wants to keep the speed up, but I'm sure you give far more away hitting than you do by steering and avoiding the hits. Martin, 5,500s is usually money in the bank. Oh. Most tracks, it's down to 18. He's going to have all he can do to, to keep wow. dropping two places. Yeah, because Matt Weston is only 900s behind the leader. 100, he's holding on, but the fifth best speed, do the math, he's going to be about 10 hundreds behind I the think next Weston was quicker. He's 424. He's slower than Heraskevich. Yeah, yeah, so Heraskevich is. Well, he probably won't drop to uh, fourth behind Florian Hour, but he is third. Fifth best times. So Matt Weston will be moving up as well. The actors. Richard Bromley, the uh, coach. Because she knows this is a good result for this young athlete. He's got yeah. decent start times. You know, he has the four. Anybody below five seconds is a great starter. He's Richard got, Bromley, the sled builder for the Korean program. So he's got the seventh, sixth, seventh best start, probably the seventh best start in this heat. Let's take a look at his start again. It's so important to get a good getaway here from four to five, rather. Yeah, well, he, he drops off four before he even hits this, five. Watch this. Look at that. That's why we call it the scorpion. Yeah. His left foot comes all the way over and hits the ice. And here, he didn't do very well here. Too high. And if you disappear there, you're losing a lot of time. Another, again, another guy, good starter, bright future for him. Drops behind Matt Weston and Vladislav Heraskevich. What about Yevgeny Rukoshwev, the third of the Russian athletes? He was in 13th place over uh, after three heats. 20-year-old down there. Yeah. 20-year-old at the top of the track. A lot of young blood in this sport. What well, Rukoshwev's problem here has been his consistency. 10th fastest, 19th fastest, 14th fastest. If he can produce another first heat. Yeah. 512 start and that's his best of the competition he's going to need it again the, the weather is mellow compared to what it's been for the last yeah. three or four days and that means the track is quick youth olympic champion in lillehammer 2016. doesn't have the start like the trechikov well he was three tenths ahead of heraskevich when he lay down he has not added to that at all but he hasn't lost anything little skid there yeah, he out lost of nine. a little bit there third best speed okay he's going to come back some more but if he has good lines on the bottom he can maintain the position Here we 17. Go. Mm, it's second be best close Ooh, that's not going to help going to be close isn't it only 900 speed between heraskevich and Weston. okay third Should best speed i think this is going right to the hundredth either way 
He's going to hang on in front of Hiroskevich. 200. Two hundreds of a second. I was wrong. Two hundreds off, and the Russians take a deep breath. So yeah. they're shooting off on the left. Long time competitor. Yeah. So he makes it through. Hey, that's a good result for this young athlete. Yeah. 13th. Evgeny Rukoshev, his first world championships, 20 years old. Not the lightning starter that we often see with the young Russians, but he is definitely a driver. How are these lines? A little to the middle part of the straightaway, then he gets into a little bit of a skid, but uh, quiet correction, stays off the wall. 11 and 12, the snake corner combination. And on the right wall into 13, I thought that was going to really cost him, and it did, but he's the leader. Fastest run of the four for Yevgeny Rukoshev, and he will finish no worse than 13th in his first World Championships. Well, next up, Kim Jisoo of Korea. So Kim with a slender advantage over Rukoshev at least in any other conditions. But as you can see, 11th and 12th on day one, only 16th on day two, dropping away on his third heat, needs to recover that ground. Low five start, there it is, 502, very consistent. You know, he's better than most, better than average starter. And you know, the Koreans coming off that Olympic gold medal by one at the, 19, or the 2018 Olympics, and they've established a legacy. And we've seen some new young athletes come forward because of that medal. He's got 50 hundreds lead, but um, that doesn't mean anything on this track. He's opening up his advantage. This looks much more like his first heat, much more controlled. He hasn't raced on this track officially before. He's done some training. Ooh, but that's his highest line. Watch out here. You saw a little scrambling. Yeah. Down to 41 hundreds. That's six best speed. It's going to come down into the 20s here, probably coming at us. Well, There's the Schwer, 20s. Heraskevich and Matt Weston only 11 hundreds apart, the top three at the moment. So it should be enough. Going to beat them all, I think, at the line. Yes, Barely. by 8 hundreds. Look at the <laughs> Look at those two. on the left and Richard Bromley on the Don't right. Don't take that. That's another young athlete. Great finish for him. And down at the bottom, picking up the sleds on the coaching staff now, Hansin Lee, who was their, competing for their Korea. Their number two guy, yeah? Yeah, up into the uh, Olympic Games. So Hansen celebrated his hey, birthday yesterday. Yeah, that's top a good one. for Kim, maybe even better. That's his second world championships. He finished Highest. 14th in Whistler, but... When yeah. you disappear like that, it only can be bad. There's nothing good about that. And then you come up on the exit here of the Kreisel, and, and then you're looking at the uh, 11 and 12 in the wrong angle, and... Oh, I wouldn't recommend that. Kim Jisoo, the new leader, takes over from Yevgeny Rukoshev as we head towards our top ten, the fourth and final run of the Men's Skeleton World Championships. Big surprise in the first heat. Sixth fastest man down the track, Yan Wenggang of China, the World Cup and World Championship rookie. But Yan, 20th, a big bomb, 20th in Whistler, 22 years old, then couldn't hold it together in heats two and three. I think he amazed everybody, including me. I mean, his coaching and staff. And uh, talking to one of the coaches this morning, that they, they say he really beat himself up for the second run. Third run, 12th, not bad. That's about where we expect him. He was not the top-ranked Chinese athlete coming into this world championship. And Martin, didn't he have great success in the North America's Cup, right? Yeah. He won a couple races in Park City. So the Chinese are coming fast and furious preparing for the 2022 Olympic Games on their new home track that's got one of these Chrysles in it. And he gave us warning of his potential in Sam Moritz earlier this season when he finished in seventh place in the World Cup race. 1,400s lead, that's not a lot. You've got to be perfect here in this uphill section. Boy, he is. 2,900s, he's starting to flop, pull away here. And he's giving away time still to Kim of Korea, but Jan will be Enough. at... 56, 95. 30 hundreds better than Ooh. his last heat. There's Andy Schmidt, the silver medalist in 1991. And Andy Schmidt was the coach, head uh, performance director of the British. Yep. In 2010, 14, and 18, and all they did was win three consecutive gold medals in women's bob. And what did the Chinese do? Uh -huh. He retired from Britain, and he's in <laughs> China. 
Schmidt, the men's skeleton world champion in 93 in La Plana. Yeah, but he's, here's our yeah. scorpion, another oh, victim. Oh, 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 oh that's on a tough one. That he's was lucky. almost on his yeah, back. Yeah, how does he stay in the lead with that type of uh, exit of the well, scorpion curves? His, his sled set up by uh, Willy Schneider to be fast Asians. and loose. Well, yeah. Ten years ago, we didn't have Asians okay. in the sport. Now well, they're winning gold medals, and yeah. I, I believe you're going to see some Asian medals and uh, Chinese medals in Beijing. 10 down, 10 to go. Men's Skeleton World Championships in Altenburg, Germany. Our current leader, Yang Wen Gang of China. Marcus Wyatt next up for Great Britain. In 10th spot after the first heat. A disappointing day one. He turned his form completely around overnight with an eighth fastest run. Let's see what he's got in the fourth and final heat. One of the best starters in the field, fourth, sixth, and fifth. And there's the 494. He saves his best for last. He ties his best time in which he had the first heat. His problem was the first day, he yep. couldn't get through the Scorpion section of the track. Let's watch. Got to hear that second stick. Nice, there he goes. Nice. He's obviously watched some video overnight. Listen to some coaches. Rethinking what he's doing, maybe changing the setup on the sled a little bit. It's a faster track than they've trained on. It's faster than any of the heats so far. Good run from nine. His former sport, he lists his American football. He was a wide receiver. That's a great looking run out of the Chrysler. Here we wow. go. He's flying. 6,500s up over Yan Wen Gang. This is him sealing a top 10 finish. Wow, he is just putting it together in the second day. 12th place in Whistler last year and across the line. 56.37, half a second quicker than he went in the last heat. 5,700's better, wow. So it's all about what's going on between the ears. You could have, his head could he have gone down He did this the first day. He's be, he'd yeah. be up there in this top seven. And that's experience. It's a time on the ice. Second world championships. He's going to leave the season. Well, tomorrow I bet you he's competing, right? Yeah, could well be. He was fifth in the team competition in Whistler. I'm sure he'd love to do it. Look at the coach that's here. Marek, oh no, that's Charles, isn't it? The, the, uh, Canadian. Canadian. I know, it's, that is Marek, the Latvian coach they have this year. And his, li his line compared to Jan with the uh, black legs, look at how much he closes, John. Yeah, that what? speed going on to the Chrysler. Got a little bit more mover than Yang. Yang might have been steering too much. Ah, he's uh, the leader now with nine to go. Good job, Marcus Wyatt. Day two, and he is our race leader with nine sleds to go. Final heat for the Men's Skeleton World Championships. Altenburg in Germany, Martin Haven and John Morgan watching Russia's Nikita Tregibov. Last year, he was in the bronze medal position in Altenburg in the World Cup race. Silver medal at the World Championships, yeah. right? And silver medal at the Olympics. Silver in the Olympics. Tretikov was silver in uh, Whistler last year. Tregibov has not found that Olympic form this year either. Under and, Underperformed so far. And already gone behind. Well, you know, it's just like he's going through the motions. He's got a, a young baby now. He's a father. And, just doesn't seem to be the guy we saw the last couple of years. Last just, yeah, just hasn't got the rhythm, hasn't yeah. got the feel of it this year. I, I, I think at he's 70 just 70 miles an hour, 80 miles an hour head first. I don't think anyone's going through the motions here, but he's, he's not the man that he was a couple of years ago. But we're two years out of the Olympics. Yeah, you know, you don't want to peak two years in advance of the Olympics. You want to peak an oh, Olympic year. Oh, he's closing on Marcus White. Got to get him. Look at the speed. 100 back and top speed for the Russian on his Snyder sled across the line by 700. 56. Five, I think we talked him into that great run. No, no, we he's, gave him, <laughs> he's sort of beat him up a little bit. Well, he's one of the best guys in the world, and he yeah. just hasn't been doing it. You know, and uh, different focus and As different say, priorities. Olympic silver medalist, so yeah, maybe come Beijing 2022, yeah, he'll be right back in the mix. Yeah, he's being very sportsmanlike, and you know, usually he's up on the podium. Look at this beautiful exit of nine. The speed, look who's got the best speed. Yep. The Tregoboff second, Marcus Wyatt with the best start of those three sleds, third. And here's the line out of uh, 14, crucial. This is where he, he made his time right there. Perfect lines on the exit of 14. And no snow there today in the second, this uh, fourth and final heat, second day of today, second heat of today. Next up is his teammate, Alexander Tretikov. And probably of all the things that was in Tregibov's mind, it was trying to overhaul this man, his teammate, but 
Alexander Chetikov is four tenths clear after three heats. Disastrous first heat, better heat two, pretty decent heat three. He's done everything, the sport, a World Cup champion, world champion, Olympic champion, he's done everything. 494, he's been the fastest starter in all three heats up until now. He is still the fastest starter. And his problem is in the first heat, 13th best time because he was on his back right here out of this ex exit of... And he, oh, and he again. hits it again. Boy. Well, this might be trouble for Alexander Chetikov. Four tenths up at the start. He's out to 6,800. That's, That's not a good line either. Oh, and again, bad off 52. nine. 11th best speed. OK, I think this is going to trade off. I don't think Chetikov has got enough left. We'll tell right here. 39. Now he's got one more seventh best speed. Now if he comes okay. straight at us here, right here, he's got a chance. There. That's good lines. 2400s. That'll save Sixth it. best. It's going to be close. It's going to be though. close. It's going to be single digits. It's going to be close between the two Russians and at the line. 15. Tretiakov he held on. Just he held on. on. He held on. But the 11th best time That was 3,400 slower than Tregibov on that one run. run. Yeah, with that start, he beat Tregibov by 1,400s at that start, yeah. by 1,600s over four heats, and only beat him by 15 at the bottom. So not one of the best world championships we've seen from one of the best right. ever in the sport. And this is why he's, he's two for four coming through this curve. He's done that twice. That is not the key to success. The other two weren't pretty. That was just plain ugly. 2013 world champion, 2014 Olympic champion. But he's world not going to make the he's top done six today. So Alexander Chechikov with things to think about during the summer. Thomas Dukurs of Latvia, like Alexander Tretikov and Brother Martins, one of the three athletes remaining in the field who raced here in the World Championships in 2008. And Amir Ambel is the fourth, but he had to pull out after the first heat. And again, coach Matthias Guggenberger pointed to something in the track that is not being attended to by the track workers. Lump of ice there, jury member clearing out the groove. Look at his, oh, look at his, look at his but hands. the clock was running. Now watch your hands, watch his hands the way his hands point down. Keep your eyes on that technique. Sprinter's technique. 5'11", that's about what he usually does. It's not, you know, he's, he's 37, 38 years old. Yep, and, uh, 38 years old. Competed here in 2008. It's back 2007, Sam Ritz was the first world championships for the Dukos brothers and Tretiakov. And, uh, you know, it's quietly in the red, but uh, if anybody can do 300, so what's the speed? Seventh best speed. Oh, this is going to be close, isn't it, with Tretikov, well, arch now, rivals for 15 Now he's in green years. numbers because this is what the guy does. He's as good a glider as anybody, he's the tallest athlete in the competition. How are these lines? Perfect, second best speed. This really will be the building the speed down at the bottom now. This is interesting because if Martins Ducourse has got a similar wow. setup on the sled, 56, 66. then suddenly we might see some fireworks at the end of the run. Martins is in fourth place, half a second out of the medals, but... I think the medals are a reach unless God, one of the Germans fall know. over on their side. Well, but that was the f second fastest sled we've seen down the track. So what was going on at the start with all that drama, picking bits out of the ice? So God, he's so tall, yeah. that's why his feet are so far away from the sled. Now watch him cross over. Again, the tallest man in the competition takes, not everybody takes both hands off the sled and when they jump on. Yeah. But he's so experienced and such a veteran. Still, and four to five. Ooh, there's a that. scorpion, another yeah. victim. He so laughs. Thomas, the leader, with six to go. Top six, final run of the Men's Skeleton World Championships in Altenburg in Germany. Next up, our Olympic champion, Sun Bin Yun. Well, you're the winner here in the World Cup race two seasons ago, the silver medalist last year, but only sixth place after three heats of the World Championships. Overnight, Richard Bromley, his sled builder, wow. tells me they said, OK, this is done, we're going to try something different. Well, his post ties the best start of the heat, which, you know, the Olympic champion that he is, he had the best starts, he had the best downtimes, he... Uh, Made himself a legend at his home Olympics two years ago, and 
set the precedent for other Asian nations to get involved in this Olympic sport. 6700s out to 8300s out. Ridiculous. Huge advantage he's building here over Thomas Ducors. Is he going to be able to pick off still Germany's away. Felix Keisinger? Six best speed. I think that's related to the track is getting scratched up down below. It's lost a little bit back. Probably going to leave it in the 60s, but still Four six passes. tenths. And across the line he comes. Watch the time. It's a 56.33. That's his quickest run of the competition. Wow. They did. 3,300s faster than the first heat. Yeah, Richard Bromley said overnight, they went, OK, medals are out of the question. Let's just try something different. Let's learn from this. And Jon is always up for that. Richard says, hey, let's try something left field. OK. Never argues the toss. No, let's not do that. Let's go cautious. No. He wants to learn something every day. Well, they're getting to this 56.33 there, Martin, where 47 hundredths off that elusive track record we saw yesterday. And the way these uh, Germans are sliding, we might get there. Yeah, 56.15. The speed after the Chrysler. Thomas Dukar's just rocketed down the track with the deficient start time. And he still had a better speed than Jun. But he's our leader. Much better start time. That's the key there. So, Sumin Young, Thomas Dukors, Alexander Tretikov, the top three with five to go. Junior World Champion Felix Keisinger has been a regular part of Germany's World Cup squad all season long. Here he is, the fourth German athlete in the World Championships, and three of them are yet to come. Keisinger fifth after three of the four heats. Seventh, sixth, and then second in the third run. Best start on the third in the third run here. Best speed. I just, you know, he's a rookie in the World Championships, and I think he just forgot that yesterday counted too. I mean, because if he, well, he's made a habit all year long of having a rubbish first heat and then living in the leader's box because he has a great second heat. Here, he's just done not a great first day, and he's having a much better second day. Kaisinger easing himself 1400s ahead of the Olympic champion. It's not the battle with Jürn. He's trying to overhaul Martins to course to make a German 1, 2, 3, 4. Fourth best speed. It's going to be close. Oh, good exit there. there. That was awesome there. Top speed. Top speed. This is what he did in the first run. Here we go. Keisinger looking to try and overhaul Martins to course wow. to make it a 1, 2, For 3, 4. Four Germans. Wow, 56-14, Martin, we're only 2,800s from that track record. Yeah. With four sleds to go. That's inside. And this, this young German here, though, might have just posted the best time of the heat or second best time of the heat. Where was this yesterday? Well, only one, no, only two sleds have come down quicker. Alexander Gassner in the second heat and Christopher Grothair in the second heat. They're the only two who have come down quicker than that. How old is he? 22 years old. Boy, we have Junior some Junior world youth. champion. We have some youth in the sport. Yeah. And this is a great athlete. Look at his feet inside the line. Of course, he's only about 5'7", five, 5'8", five, <laughs> exactly. which allows that. He doesn't have to worry about the leverage like Thomas Dukars. But uh, good starter, good driver of the sled. This is the next German superstar here. Now, I talked about the only clean sweep of the podium in men's skeleton history, 91 in Eagles. Fourth place, Franz Plager for Austria. There's been a 1-2-3-4 as well. Martins Ducours could prevent it happening for a second time. He's only 1,500s ahead of Felix Keisinger. He needs another Superman run. Had a 95 start in the first run. They got 95 again. So that start, that's going to go away. That minus 12 down to about minus 8. But he's got the best velocity out of curve one because he has such experience of getting on that sled with momentum. And but he is the best driver on the planet, bar none, no matter what the result today. But he hasn't really. Mark, hasn't Six world championships, 53 career wins in World Cup races. He is the Superman of our sport. 1300s, he's growing the margin slowly, fastest he's got speed the best into the Chrysler. So uh, the world is rooting him on, so there won't be a quadrennial a quad sweep by the uh, Germans. I have no problem with the top four from Germany, but Martin Stukos is putting on a great show here. Well, he is the best the sport has ever seen. He is going to be the leader at the line. 
56.06. Oh. That's inside the old record yeah. before the race well, started. Racing was it's inside the old record as well. So uh, 56.10 was the record. Oh, it was. Okay, so Kaisinger 56.06. His best heat of the four. The track still yeah. has the record speed in. Whoever sets the track uh, record of the next three sleds is going to win. That's it, it's coming yes. out. The next three sleds, it's like a one-off. Well, twenty hundred <laughs> separating the three of them for a world championships that a German has never won on this track, and this is the third world championships. Was it a perfect no. scorpion? But watch this here. Watch him catch Kessinger here. Again, look at Martins just allowing the sled to, to do roll. its He's work. He's not steering it. He's letting no. the pressure point take it. Don't fight centrifugal force and let the sled do what it does. Look at that exit textbook. Could you be any more down the middle of the tube? Come on. Martin Martin's two course, the greatest skeleton goat. slider. G-O-A-T for sure. Okay, three to go. Martin's two course leads for Latvia. Okay, put your seatbelts on. If anybody beats him, we will have a first time world champion. Axel Jung, the local hero, leader in heat one. Dropped to third place overnight. Fastest run in heat three brought him from 3100s to two tenths off the lead. And again, 1999, the first Skeleton World Championships on this track. Jim Shea of the United States won. 2008, Kristen Bromley of the United States, or excuse me, of Great Britain, won the gold. So this is Germany's first opportunity to win a gold on its home track, and this is the first of three really fast athletes coming and down. Only two Germans have ever won a Skeleton World Championships. Andy Barmer in 2000, Willi Schneider in 98. It's been 20 years for skip. Germany's men wow. without a title. Wow, 6,400s at this pace. This. He needs a great exit. He's got a great exit. It's not about Martins Dukos. It's about trying to find two tenths to take gold away from Christopher Grothair. Second fastest. The gap's coming back against Tom uh, Martins Dukos. Yeah, he will be the leader 56, at the line. He's 56, in the medals, so but where is he in the yes. medals? So there's a bronze. That is some pretty awesome run. We will have a German champion for the first time in 20 years. No matter what happens, will it be hometown hero Axel Jung? Post Body language makes me think he's not sure that was enough. That but he's in the medals at home, and it's the other twos to lose now. Well... Post the time, get in the winner's box, catch me if you can. Yep. This was not perfect right here. This had a little bit of a skid, but he's 56.04, which is similar to what he did in the first run. And, uh, you know, he had the best time of two of the three heats. But he, was he, fastest. he does not control his destiny. He was fastest in the third heat, which was the quickest of them. Let's see what Alexander Gassner can do now. 1300s ahead of Axel Jung, 700s away from winning the World Championships. It's a three-horse race, and any money here is just a gamble. Doesn't get to start his teammate this 5-10. Wow. That's, well, that's uh, quicker than his third start. Yeah, but he was uh, All right. speed master on the bottom. Let's see what Gassner has Can got. Can he get through the... Albatross, yes. Nicely. And you heard it, how smooth, smooth it is from four to five. 1,400s now. He stops the bleeding right here to 16, 1,700s. If not, Young's going to get him on the bottom. Uh, out he comes. 18. Best speed, 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 though. Out. This is what he does. Right. Chrysler. He's done the first three heats. Good exit. Great exit from the Chrysler. No speed. 15. Oh, it's going to be close. Best speed. This is going to be too close to call at the bottom. He's got to be perfect here, and he is. Down to 600s. Could it be a dead heat between the two of them? 600s in the second. Axel Jung. He's oh, going to catch him. He's got him. No, no. Alexander Gassner comes out 200 shy. Junk will get at least a silver medal. One down. Oh my goodness. Boy, that Alexander Gassner took won. too much of curve 16. Tiny skid there. He will be a world championship medalist for the for very first, first time. time. But he wanted the big prize. He was hoping for gold. All this go. was good. Out of nine. All this was good. He Tiny had the red numbers. Drift. That's mm. 200s. Yeah, the 
1800s, and here he was only 600, 300 back. I figure he's going to get him, but look how too high there. Comes down, he has to come back up. This is where it all fell away for him right there. Maybe just covering a meter. And watch him hit before the finish line. Flops against the Bang. line. And then, oh. Okay. So Axel Jung leads, Alexander Gassner second, Martin Stukor's third. So the Christopher Grothair has what, not what? had a World Cup race this year. Beaten out by Felix Keisinger, didn't get in the squad, but... His chance to win the World Championships. Two of his three World Cup medals, one of his wins has come on this track. Fifth at the World, at the world Championships last year in Whistler. The pressure on him... Oh, look at that, 503! Fastest start of the day of for the him. Three, of the three heats, he's in the green. Martin, but you know, there's all sorts of challenges coming up Absolutely. right here. Absolutely. Ooh, and Greenish, but he came in here with nothing nine. to lose. And only 900s. He had a 2000s lead, but he sat down on Young. I think he was even smiling when he put his helmet on. You say, oh, scared, scared. he's lost it. Oh, eight eight best speed. Now he needs to be utterly genius below the Chrysler. How close? Oh, here he comes, fourth. Four hundreds. Perfect line in the straightaway. We've got to come perfect right at it. Not as good speed. He as does. It's down to 100. Oh, my goodness. Third fastest speed. The final corner decides the gold medal. Axel Jung or Christopher Grothair. Grothair is Two hundreds of a second. Can you believe what that? a race. Christopher Grothair. We haven't seen him all year. And Grothair is a the world champion. I bet you he, he was 50. He's got to be 25 to 1 odds to win the world championships. Maybe more. Christopher Grothair, winner in the World Cup here three years ago. A bronze medal two years ago and world champion this year. I've never seen him so emotional. Wow. What a race. Axel Jung led, Christopher Grothair led. Alexander Gassner there on the left-hand side in the mix as well. Martin is the first ski jumper, oh, former wow. ski jumper ever to win a world championship. And the first sweep of a podium by one nation since 1991. 30 years. Well, there's Nikita Tregibov goes to offer his congratulations. The people all in orange are here for Axel Young. And there's a bunch Local. there as well for Alexander Gassner. There's a bunch there for Christopher Grothair. Wow. One, two, three for German's men skeleton. And the world champion 2020, Christopher Grothair. He Mark. took the lead overnight. Mark. Three sleds separated by five hundredths of a second. That's the closest race we've ever seen. Thank you. That's, that's, that's unbelievable. <laughs> five hundredths of a second on this treacherous track. I got no problem with the nationality of anyone on the podium when you have a race that close. That was just fantastic. And there is the result. Christopher Grote here by two hundredths of a second over four runs from Axel Jung, Alexander Gassner, 500s back, the greatest slider on the planet, more than half a second adrift in fourth place. Whoa. Whoa. Can we take a breath? Okay, we still have women's skeleton, a team competition, and the four-man bobsleigh to deal with this weekend. But really? this track keeps up throwing the results at us. That is the men's skeleton world championships from Altenburg in Germany. Well, I don't Goodness know. me, wow. Axel Junk, two hundreds of a second. We tried to work this out in Samaritz, and at the sort of speed you're doing at the bottom, 120 kilometers an hour, a hundredth of a second is something like a quarter of an inch or about a centimeter. Axel Young had the fastest time in the first, third, and fourth heats yeah. and lost the world championships. Yeah. And that's why sprinters dip for the line. That's why cyclists thrust the wheel forward at the line. You can't do that on a skeleton sled. You can't stretch your neck to the line. But you bet they all tried. What a race. 500 is covering the podium. That's ridiculous. And, and nobody else in the race. Martin no. Stuka's fourth place, 5,200 off third. It really was like that right off the bat, the first heat. Yeah. The, and then the second heat, Grothier and Gaster broke the
the track record, left, left Axel Young in the dust. I was just thinking that. Did we notice whether they got another track record? We didn't no, in the end. No, it was they, a 56 22. No, no, the, oh the track record was 55 86. And when the, uh, I think the fastest time of the heat went to Kessinger. No, uh, oh, six. no 56 04 for Axel Young. No, 56 yeah. 06 Kessinger. for Martin's two cores. Kess Kessinger had the second, uh, the second fastest it, time of both runs. If it had been on this heat only, Axel Young would have won by two hundreds from Martin's two cores. What Kessinger? With Kessinger, 56 14, 14 would have been third. Yep. 56 20, fourth for Gassner. 56 22, fifth for Grote Hair. So Dukar's best I mean, he's the second yep. best. How did he pull that off? Well, quick ice. You know, this is. You remember what Francesco Friedrich said. I want it to be as hard and fast as possible because that's where the skill comes in. That's where you get the advantage. And that's where Martin Stukos showed his best. But it's not one heat. It's four heats. And in the end, the German trio, they had everybody firmly under control. 2020 BMW IBSF Men's Skeleton World Championships here in Altenburg. What a sensational finish. The closest in history. I haven't gone back that far to see, but 500s covering the podium. Three. Christopher Grote here, Axel Junk and Alexander Gassner. What a race, John Morgan. What a race. Never seen anything like it. Uh, you know, it could have been anybody's event, but 500s in almost three and a half miles of distance separating three sleds. You kind of want to give them all the gold medal. Yeah, you know, let them all tie. Yeah. Everybody. It's just painful for Axel Young to fastest in three of the four heats and doesn't win the world championship title. If we're measuring intense, that would be a three-way tie for gold with Alex with uh, Marcus. And Gross here left off the team this year. He was an also ran. Yep. He qualifies himself back because Felix Kessinger wins the junior world championship. Is the only way he gets in the field. If you're gonna have a race, win it. And if it's the world championships, all right, win that too. His only senior race of the season, and Christopher Grote here is Germany's first world champion in 20 years, their third ever in men's skeleton. First ever on this track in three times, yep. too. Yep. Yeah, the 91 uh, skeleton worlds were in uh, Innsbruck, but the bobsleigh worlds were here. Well, there is the Secretary General of the IBSF, Heike Grossang, hanging out the flowers to Alexander Gassner. To Axel Junk and to our world champion, Christopher Grothair. 27 years old. Can you believe it? Well, he was fourth in Whistler last year. We haven't seen him this year. And he leads a German sweep of the podium in one of the most exciting world championship skeleton races ever. Join us for more action tomorrow, Saturday. Women's Skeleton 0930, 0830 Greenwich Mean Time for John Morgan and me, Martin Haven, from the IBSF TV crew. For now, from Altenburg, Auf Wiedersehen and goodbye.